Hello, 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 everyone! Flash Notion here, back for another reaction to Ruby. This time, I almost said My Hero Academia again. Because <laughs> I already recorded uh, the most recent episodes for that when I before this. Um, so yeah, uh, but no, no. This time it's Ruby. Yay, Ruby! <laughs> uh, volume nine. Volume 9, episode 2, or chapter 2, rather. Um, first one was pretty interesting. I mean, we spent most of it just kind of gathering people together. Um, so, uh, going back on it, um, I had some thoughts after, or like in between the episodes, um, I don't know if I should bring them up now or talk about them later. Um, yeah, all very interesting. We spent most of the time gathering people together. Uh, we set up a, a couple of things that are going to be happening moving forward. We had the intro that I, myself, dissected a fair amount. Um, or at least tried to. I'm gonna. I'm definitely going to do it again. Because I feel like I haven't gotten everything out of that intro that there is to get. Um, and... Uh, yeah, we, uh, we are in Ever After, a place that is basically a fairy tale, it seems like. Uh, very much based on Alice in Wonderland slash Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. Um, I have never actually read the originals, and it's it, it has been so long since I saw, like, the animated Disney version. Um, I am most familiar, honestly, with the, uh, the, what was it, 2010, uh, Tim Burton-type film, um, which, I know that one, like, took quite a few liberties with the source material, um, and mainly seemed to be set up as, like, a sequel of sorts to the animated Disney version. Like, it was cool, but, like, I, I know that that's not something to really base, uh, to really base my knowledge of Alice in Wonderland off from. Um, so yeah, but I mean I know the I know the basics. I know that there's like a Cheshire cat and like uh the like the the Mad Hatter and like the the uh what is it, the March Hare? You know, the White Rabbit, uh Queen of Hearts, the 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 fucking caterpillar that smokes a hookah. Like <laughs> I know, oh, and Tweedledee and Tweedledum, who we've already had referenced in Ruby before, but, like, they could do something like that again. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what all we're going to get in this episode, but, uh, yeah, we only have a few more. This is going to be a relatively short season, so, like, they, uh, they're going to have to go through quite a bit. And it does seem like we're going to be spending the entire volume in the Ever After, we're not going to see anything that goes on... Oh, excuse me. We're not going to be seeing anything from, uh... From Vacuo. For the time being. Um... So, yeah. Uh... Main thing going into this one... Honestly, I just want to, uh... I just want to listen to the, the opening. The, the opening song. Um... Because... Last time I was focused on the visuals of the opening, and I don't think I paid enough attention to the lyrics. And it's not really anything that I've done previously with Ruby, uh, but, you know, in the time since watching Volume 8, um, I've rewatched the show like half a dozen times um, in very, through various ways. And one thing that I know now is that the lyrics of the opening are so meaningful. Or at least they're supposed to be. Um, so I very much want to go through this volume 
knowing the the uh, the lyrics to the opening and like trying to figure out what that means. If I can't hear them clearly in this recording, I'm going to actually look them up. All right, and we'll we'll dissect them in that manner. But uh, for right now, let's uh, let's get started. Actually, so we'll switch over. And we will uh, begin watching the episode in three, two, one, and play. Okay. So, now that we're back, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the lyrics of the Volume 9 opening. I have them pulled up right here. Um, apparently it's called Inside. Neat. Uh, Alright. So, sinking down into the depths of nowhere. I mean, we already did that part. We uh, fell through the world. I am undone. Hmm. I mean, we're kind of breaking our characters down a little bit, especially Ruby. Clasping tight onto memories I know. That could that could have had something to do with like this episode and like the raccoon wanted memories. They'll be overrun. Hmm. Like lost. I don't know. Uh, okay, so in parentheses, by a girl. So is that they'll be overrun by a girl? Or, like, is that just a random thing? I'm guessing the girl is uh, Alex from the story. We must live with balance, but balance is blind. I don't know about that. It uh, seems like a random lyric. Balance, like... Emotional balance? Uh, I don't know. Lost her world. I mean, Weiss lost her home. We covered that this time. Hmm. Vengeance is a riptide in a fairy tale she'll find. I don't know. Like, so far the lyrics are seeming uh, pretty nonsensical. Maybe it'll make more sense in hindsight? Inside a new me, I'm ready, but who will I find? All right. So again, like, Ru we're really breaking down Ruby this season, it seems like. Gotta let go, but could I lose my mind? <laughs> yeah, Ruby seems like she's about to go fucking crazy. Waves of gold overwhelm my senses. A fire blooms. Why should I fight to connect with a world I cannot exhume? I think of Exhum, yeah, I think... Uh, expose. Hmm. I feel like that might not be the actual lyric. Like, maybe somebody didn't actually... Uh... Hmm. Oh, I guess maybe Casey just posted the lyrics on Twitter. Okay, so maybe it is the real lyric. Why should I fight to connect with a world I cannot exhume? Maybe that's actually a reference to Alex. Because, like... Like, her whole thing in in the fairy tale was that uh, she came back changed, right? Like, that's what Ozpin said? Hmm. Trusted love. Okay. Uh, well... The lyrics to vol or the the volume seven opening was trust love. I mean that we saw how that turned out. That world is ungrateful. A family estranged. Hmm. Hatred won. Yeah, I mean it did. What I'd give in exchange to be happy without trying. <laughs> well, that yeah. Okay, I can relate to that lyrics. Um. Hmm. You know, I, I was thinking that this lyric was about Ruby, but maybe it's all about Alex. Like, all of it. To her tree, inside, new me, I'm ready, but okay, just a repeat of that. 
I don't know. Hmm. Now, all I'm getting out of this is either this is all about Alex and it will make more sense once we have met her and once we know her story. Or it's all about Ruby and Ruby is just going to get put even more through the ringer this this volume than what I thought. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, okay, so about the actual episode. Um, I mean, first of all... I, I I talked about this on a Discord after last episode, but holy shit, Weiss is just a fucking cartoon character in this one, in this volume. Like, we we've been doing stuff like that with Weiss for a for a while. I mean, technically, even going back to volume one, um, you know, the part where she fell on John uh, after she fell off the Nevermore, like. I, I think it was, like, you know, full Looney Tunes was, like, the, the production notes on that scene. But, like, <laughs> it's it's never been to this extent. Like, literally, Weiss is now a cartoon character. On the one hand, I love it. It's, a, it's amazing. It's hilarious. But it does kind of, I think, detract from her. She's a very serious character outside of the comedy aspect of it all like i don't know i don't know I, I both love it but i also wish it was being done by like i don't know I, I i don't even want it to be done with one of the others either i just don't know um so uh Still, uh, still unsure about Little. Like, Little is cute, but, uh, sorry about that. Model broke a second. Little is cute, but I don't really, uh, know if I like the mouse yet. I don't know if the mouse is worth it all. Um, but, uh, yeah. It's, it's nice to know that we're, it's like, it's nice to, uh, have confirmation that the, uh, the world of Ever After, like, creates a path for characters. And if it doesn't, if the characters aren't following that path, then they're, they basically loop back on it, on themselves until they do. That's why Ruby couldn't get past the clearing. She had to meet Little first. Um, Weiss couldn't leave to go to the tree because they have to go to the Red King's birthday party first. Neat. Um, again, it's, you know, Red King is the Queen of Hearts. We have, like, chess pieces and toy soldiers and stuff. As opposed to, you know, the cards and whatnot. The playing cards and whatnot. Um, yeah. All, just all very, very interesting. Um, I, uh... I don't know. What all to expect? I don't... I don't know who the, uh... The raccoon is supposed to be a, uh... An analog to, if anyone... But, hey, it's interesting. Um, yeah, the, uh, I, I swear that the jar thing, it's a, it's a reference to Pandora's box, which wasn't actually a box, it was a, it was basically a jar. Um, because <laughs> in the story of Pandora, as it goes, the jar was opened and all the demons escaped to, like, fuck up humanity but also contained within the jar was the spirit of hope but hope could only leave if given permission um and only when given permission by a human uh at least that's the version rick riordan used in percy jackson books he, he was pretty 
he seems like he was pretty good about doing research into the Greek myths, so, like, I trust that version. Um, it's so like, the idea is that if a human opens uh, Pandora's jar again, um, hope will leave. And, uh, yeah, that's, um, that's a pretty cool thing, because, like, you ba it, it's basically a like a a metaphor for giving up hope um you know your enemies can't do it no one else can do it for you only you can give up hope and like in this case ruby would be giving up hope to essentially get a painful reminder of the past <laughs> um and she didn't give it up to the raccoon, but I have to wonder if, like, in a less literal sense, she still gave up hope in that moment. Like, there might have been a part of her that was just, like, hoping that, that Weiss was wrong and that Penny survived, but, you know, finding one of Penny's swords... Uh, it's enough to make Ruby lose that hope. Uh, and then, yeah, the biggest thing, I think, is Ruby's line. Stop pretending that they know what they're doing. Because, I mean, that's always been it. Ruby, Ruby's the leader. She has to know what she's doing at all times. She has to be the best. Um, you know, it's, it's something that I've been thinking about a lot because, you know, recently I've been going back, or er, like recently I've been watching uh, people go through the early volumes, um, you know, other reactors. And yeah, it, it stuck out to me so much that uh, Ruby's conversation with Ozpin and then subsequently with Jean about what it means to be a leader and how much Ruby has been struggling with that lately. And yeah, here, you know, we, we've gotten the breakdown. It started. Ruby admitting that she doesn't know what she's doing. She doesn't know what to do next. She doesn't have a plan. She doesn't have she doesn't have a clue. And, you know, it, it hurts to hear that. It hurts to hear Ruby just admit defeat in a sense. She's lost her optimism, her hope, her... Her ideas about how to make the world a better place. It's all gone, you know? Um, conversation with Weiss didn't really help. Because um, it was Ruby's plan that they took a chance on, and Atlas itself was destroyed. And, yeah, they don't know it yet, but Cinder took the relics. Penny's dead. Everything failed. Everything failed. And, uh, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> um... I imagine they, they'll, uh, when they finally reunite with Jean, it's all gonna come for full circle there. Hmm. I do have to wonder about that, because, yeah, now that I think about it, Jean doesn't appear much in the intro, does he? I'm actually gonna go back and look here real quick. It's like, he appears opposite Neo. With him looking angry, her looking sad. But I don't think he... Yeah, the only time he appears after that is with the clocks. Hmm. And then there's the, the Rust Knight, I think is what they called it. Or the Rusty Knight. Um, I wonder what that's all about. Hmm. There's a lot that we're going to be going through in this volume. With the... Uh, with a storybook and all that. Um, so much. So many references. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, I, I'm, I'm very interested in when we're actually going to meet the girl. Alex. Because, like... I'm guessing... Like, it, it, it's the question, right? Like, Alex fell through the world somehow. She somehow ended up in the Ever After long before our heroes did. And then she went back and, you know, her experiences got written about in this book, The Girl Who Fell Through the World, and it's kind of implied that she eventually went back. She found her way back because she couldn't live in the normal world. Like, that, like, it was implied, like, uh, like by what Ozpin said, as well as by the lyrics of the opening, and just, you know, the fact that our heroes are pro presumably actually going to meet her at some point. Um. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, uh, Alex is going to be a very interesting character in terms of what she means. There's an, there was something else, though. Um, right. Uh, it was the... Uh, okay, yeah. It was Ruby crossing the bridge, this rope bridge, and seeing Alex ahead of her, and then it's Ruby herself who turns around with this creepy-ass smile on her face. I And then she falls. I've, I'm wondering what that is. Is it just like Ruby is uh, like tr just pretending to be happy and it's eating away at her? Is that is it just like thinking about that, th thinking about it like that, or is it is there something deeper to it? And we immediately cut to Neo, um, with a sugar cube falling into rainbow liquid, and I okay. The scene with Neo in the opening, with her sitting at the table, drinking out of a teacup, I assumed that that was Neo, like, being the head of a crime boss or something in Ever After. And then I remembered it's an Alice in Wonderland story. Is Neo going to take the place of the Mad Hatter in the story? Like, that would be interesting. Because, like, a t the, t the Mad Hatter Tea Party... It's honestly not a very important part of the original Alice in Wonderland story, from what I understand. But it is a very prominent and well-known part of the story. So I would be very shocked if they did not uh, reference it in some way. And actually, now that I think about it, from what I've heard about Neo's story um, in, in the official, like, Ruby novels... Um, Neo is estranged from her family. Is that the lyrics reference that here? I, I don't know. I have to. Hmm. The lyrics are so weird. It's such a like. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. Such a weird, uh, weird song. Must be, must have been very hard to sing. So, props to Casey for do, being able to do it. Huh. That was a... A very interesting episode in which not much happened. We got Yang's arm back, so that's good. Um, I don't know what's going to happen after, other than that, though, like, like, hmm, I, I feel like Crescent Rose is going to be the last thing that we find, like, like, we're going to, we're going to go through this story, and we're going to, we're going to find Neo, we're going to find Jean, we're going to meet all of these other characters, and Crescent Rose is going to be the last thing that we that we find. It's going to be the last part of the journey. Because basic, basically it's going to be symbolic. It's going to be a case of, like, 
once Ruby, run, once Ruby gets Crescent Rose back, she's ready. And therefore, we can actually go back to Remnant. And, yeah. That's why it has to be the last one. Um, I, uh, I don't see it, this ending any other way. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, but again, it's, it's, it, there's just this feeling of, like, of tension. Because I know, I just know that the breakdown is coming. The point where Ruby is just not going to be able to take any more of it. She's she's keeping it together so well right now. She's trying to be a leader. She's doing her best. And it's just... She has to break at some point. And it's going to hurt so much when she does. But it's going to be so... Cathartic, I guess, is the word. Both for her and the audience. And, uh... Yeah. Thinking about it, I'm expecting that to not actually happen. Until... If there's ten episodes. See, it all depends on if they're treating this volume like one long story, or if they're treating it like you know, a TV season. Because I could see that happening in episode 8. Or I could see them holding off on it until episode 9. Hmm. I, I feel like episode 8 would be the best place for it, honestly. Because, like, you could end episode 8 with Ruby just going through a full-on breakdown and then running away. And then episode 9 can be mostly her healing. It can be her, like, picking up the pieces. And then we end episode 10 with them... A or then we go into episode 10 with them actually getting out. You know? Like, that's how I feel like I would do it, personally. But, I don't know. Anyway. Good episode. I mean, I don't think that really needed to be said. <laughs> Obviously, it was a good episode. It has Ruby ever actually had a truly bad episode? Like, you can make the argument for, like, some stuff from early volumes just not being that great, but has it ever been bad? I don't, I don't think it has. I don't think there's ever been an episode of Ruby where I'm just like, well, that sucked. You know, in terms of, like, the writing and the characters and... Everything like that, you know? There have been times where I've been like, oh, this fucking sucks in terms of the actual shit that's happening. You know, the world is going to hell. But I don't think there's ever been a bad episode of Ruby. Just my opinion. Um, but, yeah. So, good episode. <laughs> uh, and hopefully more to come. I wish these came out on the websites that I use much sooner, but unfortunately they do not. Still, I, I don't even post on YouTube, so I really don't give a shit about Rooster Teeth or Crunchyroll or whoever's policies. Fuck it. Fuck it. Um, whatever. Uh, anyways, I'll, I'll be seeing you guys next week, of course, for another episode of Ruby. Um, probably gonna try and post this one before before some of the my hero episodes come out um and then i'm gonna i'm really gonna try and get through some konosuba episodes i'm i don't hate the series i don't even really dislike it it's just one of those just one of those series where i like i kind of wish i wasn't re reacting to it i kind of wish i was just watching it normally sad but whatever. Some of those will probably be coming out soon. But yeah. Until next time. For those of you who are only watching because of Ruby. Yeah, until until next time. Bye-bye.